Hey everybody, it's Party Elite here with seven more tips for Battletech. If you've been playing the game for a while now, some of these might be clear as day to you, but some might take you by surprise. And if you're a new player, these should help set you up for success alongside my first set of 10 tips and my mech rolls video, both linked under the eye at the top right corner of the screen. Without further ado, let's begin. Bulwark for Brawlers. Under the Guts skill tree, Bulwark is a great mech warrior skill to have. In multiplayer, use it on mechs that fit the brawler or fire support roles, mechs that are meant to stay still and fire away at the enemy. In single player, you'll likely benefit most from having almost all of your mech warriors with the skill, mainly due to how the late game seems to play out in terms of mechs you and the opposition forces will have. Bulwark gives a 50% reduction to damage coming into the front and side arcs of a mech that stood still in its previous turn. This is a guaranteed reduction, and when comparing it to evasive pips, we're comparing the guaranteed damage reduction per hit versus the chance that the enemy might miss full damage. Don't get me wrong, if you're planning on using scouts, cavalry, and striker type mechs to flank and maneuver and scout around the field, you'll still value evasive pips to help the survivability of mechs that need to move around for maximum efficiency, because keep in mind that Bulwark only applies when standing in one spot. You can still turn the mech around by clicking where it's standing and changing the facing like you normally would, so make sure the front and side arcs are exposed to wherever the most damage is likely to come in from. Mind Stability Stability damage is a very powerful tool and a very terrifying enemy. Use it to your advantage and make sure you're prepared to reduce it as much as possible. Defensively, remember to use marshes to reduce the amount of stability damage you take per hit, avoid rough terrain as you move across the field, even simply passing through rough terrain increases the amount of stability damage the mech will take until its next turn. Remember to opt to brace when you're close to losing stability, even consider hiding a mech behind terrain if necessary. Offensively, use auto cannons, missiles, PPCs, or melee to cause varying degrees of stability damage. Try to bait your opponent onto rough terrain, if possible, and consider focusing on legs. Damaging legs can cause a lot of stability damage, and destroying a leg will permanently reduce how much stability damage a mech can take. The reason stability matters so much is because of all the side effects that come with it. An unstable mech is slower, and with a little push, a mech will be knocked down. Knocking a mech down results in a pilot injury. Most pilot injuries do not stack, but this one does. So there's one benefit, you can get two pilot injuries in one motion if you're very lucky. And on top of that, knocking a mech down reduces how much it can move next turn. Finally, a bit of a double whammy, knocking a mech down will let you pull a called shot on the downed mech. Not only does this let you choose where to shoot, it also reduces the initiative of the mech. This effect compiles with others to, in some cases, allow you to fire on the same mech with multiple mechs before it even gets a chance to stand back up. But remember, the same can be done to you. Train Tactics A bit of a short one, but the tactics skill tree is especially useful in single player, and in multiplayer, a high tactics mech warrior can help a mech that is equipped with LRMs and primarily has long range weapons. Down the tactics tree, you will find reduction in indirect fire penalties to hit, reduced minimum ranges, and better called shot capabilities, particularly helpful in single player when your morale can be very high through an engagement, allowing for multiple uses of precision strike. A mech piloted by a mech warrior with bulwark and high tactics can more or less stand still and fire away at inbound enemy mechs and remain effective even if they get too close. Use Cover I know I mentioned the use of terrain in the first 10 tips, but this go around I'm focusing on a different element. Rather than just considering the surface that you're standing on or walking through, consider also the actual field as a whole. We've already established in previous videos the value of line of sight, how sensor locking can help, and how indirect fire comes into play with terrain obstacles. I don't think I stressed enough the value of line of sight, and more so the consequences of weapons that can only fire directly. At any and all given times, you should consider mountains, hills, rocks, and other indestructible map features as viable sources of cover from enemy mechs. This is especially true when your mech is capable of indirect fire, such as an LRM boat, but also when you're trying to stay away from an enemy mech that can only fire directly. For example, you can hide a scout behind such a feature, and no matter how many weapons an enemy mech might have, if it's stuck on the other side of that obstacle, only the indirect weapons can actually open fire, and sometimes that mech might not have any. Indirect fire also incurs a penalty to hit chances. The use of cover goes a step further when you're trying to protect certain aspects of your mech. For example, try to keep your back against a literal wall at all times, or if you have taken damage to one side or the other and need to protect it, you can use a terrain feature to give it extra protection by blocking off the angle to said side. 
In a worst case scenario, if there are no terrain features to use as cover, use a bulkier, healthier mech to get in the way. Learn to eject. In single player, when your back is up against a metaphorical wall and one of your mechs is about to go down for the count, learn to read the writings on the wall and hit the eject button. Sure, you'll lose an operational mech for the rest of the situation, but at least your mech warrior won't die. Especially valuable if you've got a particularly great mech warrior you've trained or hired, or if you actually care for the little digital people you order around in missions. Not only that, but you'll also see a huge reduction in the amount of time spent in the med bay, and potentially even the mech bay, as the empty mech is no longer a viable target. This will also reduce your costs. Learn when to eject. It's very important. If a mech warrior only has one injury left before they die, you might want to eject. If a mech warrior only has two injuries left, has a near destroyed left or right torso piece, and you can't seem to get a chance to stabilize the mech, consider ejecting, as two pilot injuries can stack up with a knockdown injury. If a mech has no chance of staying upright and it's at the bottom of the turn order, consider ejecting. Once downed, it might be completely obliterated. Now all this sounds a little bit on the paranoid side, and it is. Feel free to take risks. Life isn't fun without a few risks, but in some cases, you'll want to be cautious. A stray shot from the last mech in a massive engagement can still kill a beloved mech warrior. Salvage Salvage in single player is the easiest way to gain access to some very powerful mechs early on. As the game tells you, you can go into any mission opting for more salvage, more money, or more reputation. The salvage number will always actually be two numbers, split by a slash between them. The first is how many salvage pieces you can choose, the second is how many you'll receive in total. The difference between the two numbers are the number of salvage pieces from the mission that will randomly be assigned. If, during a mission, you see a mech that you want, make sure you pay close attention to how you're hitting it. If you destroy a mech by destroying its central torso, it will only leave behind one piece of salvage. If you destroy a mech by destroying both its legs, it will leave behind two pieces of salvage. And finally, if you're fortunate enough to destroy the headpiece or kill the pilot, you should see three separate salvage pieces when it comes time to take your pickings. It takes three salvaged pieces of any one mech to put that mech together. Whether they're from one mission or several is irrelevant. When picking salvage, make sure you pick these parts first, and then pick any weapons or modifiers that you fancy. Even mechs you don't want will sell for a fair sum, allowing you to buy things that you do want. Melee Don't forget that melee is a real and viable option. Not only does it ignore defensive traits such as evasion, it also strips an evasive pip from the enemy and it allows you to cool down your mechs. In melee, you also trigger support weapons like machine guns and flamers. These can really help turn the tide of battle. Machine guns are great for getting a lucky headshot when performing a melee attack from the front, and flamers are a great way to overheat a mech from any angle. When it comes time to strike a mech in melee, here's something I forgot to mention in previous videos. You instigate the attack in your move phase by clicking on a mech highlighted like this, and then you can actually choose where you strike from. The ground will have these round indicators showing you the potential spots you can strike from. Pay attention to this. It can be the difference between a shot to the central torso, disarming the enemy mech, breaking its back, or hitting it where it's still strong. And remember, melee is still based on a chance to hit affected by the mech warrior's pilot skill, unlike its gunnery skill, which affects its chance to hit from range. I hope these additional 7 tips prove helpful as you continue your playthroughs online and offline with Battletech. If you have any more tips of your own, feel free to share them below. If you'd like to see certain topics covered, feel free to let me know down below as well. For now, I'm planning on covering land's composition through online skirmishes as it allows for the most variety and for me to showcase what works. As always, thank you very much for watching, and until next time, cheers.